G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Stuff and Such. Today we're just going to talk a little about um, bale grazing here in northern Ontario and how I'm going about doing it and how I'm kind of creating my silvopasture from a swampy-ish uh, overgrown tag alder, poplars and ash and elm bush. So let's get started. So that tree there, about 20 some inches across, maybe 24, is an old elm that came out of that cleared bush out there. Um, just carved a little mineral lick into it. Works pretty good. So we're gonna walk on down here to where them cows are and kind of give you an idea of how we're going about our bale grazing system. I'm not doing it um, how it should be done for a few reasons, but mainly because I'm not big enough that I don't mind putting a bale out once a week. That's currently our consumption rate is one four by five round bale hardcore a week and now that we've had one calf born and she's up there our milk cow clara one calf born it's gone to about nine days before they need a bale so you'll see the cows that are over there and i don't know if you can see with all the white but anyways there's a, a creek that runs right here and then and kind of a y shape and then they all run that way towards the lake that's way down there. So over here, I've started this summer, or this winter, I've put a bale here, 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 cross the creek, and then put one over there, and then where they are now. Basically moving about 50 yards. Over here is a, uh, it's something. Basically, I got some free straw bales. So I just kind of kicked them off here just basically to add uh, organic matter. Because after, because I don't know if you're familiar with our northern Ontario area, you'll see over in the far, there's big rock cliffs and stuff. But anyways, this was all scratched off by glaciers and stuff. So basically, we have no real topsoil to speak of. I have clay gray clay so it's really hard for seeds to get started in it but once it's started and then you hit the right uh, ph it can grow pretty good and then you can start to develop some topsoil by your rotational grazing and stuff but i got these free straw bales here so i grab them and we'll kick them out and spread them out when they're unfrozen they uh are about three years old so they're pretty crusty but they do what i want it to do so what how i do it is how where can i show you i will bring you over to the cows will giddy up the nice thing about cows is they're super easy to keep fenced in i just left this open as I brought some firewood up this morning. But they just stay where they're supposed to. Unlike other animals. Here's one spot. This was a one ago. This is one spot that they bale grazed. This portion here, that's uh, like the outside rind of a bale. So when you don't store your bales under cover, you'll get a, the top will be a spoilage. Got the hunger hiccups. 
So over here is the girls and this is where I put a bale. Now conventional method of bale grazing is you put out all your bales in the fall, early winter when you can get on them without damaging them. Put all your bales out, take your keys from your tractor, throw them in the ditch and find your keys after the snow melts and basically just run around with electric fence moving your fence and back 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 as you need more bales but that's not really what I'm doing so what I do is I go right now like this year we have a hay shortage that's part of the reason so I don't want to be too wasteful so we put a bale in the bale ring leave it there for about a week and then when it gets down to about eat like what we have here, there's about a foot of, of hay yet alive or left, I mean. And so this morning we took the bale ring, took it off, rolled it over there, and we'll let the cows finish up here for the day. And then tomorrow I'll go in and put a new bale in. So that'll make it nine days that they've... Um, graze here for. The nice thing about the bale grazing and not having to haul manure is all your manure is right around here obviously. They waters up at the, the barn so they walk along they poop all over as they walk around on their trails and they're spreading seeds by doing that and not only they're spreading seeds they're spreading the manure and the and the nitrogen and all that good nutritions not only that they are spreading their urine and a lot of places a lot of uh, dry lots they lose that when they bring all their cows into one spot they lose or they bring it all into one spot and then haul their manure away as they're losing that urea and that's what the studies are showing is that the reason that bale grazing is so effective at improving your um, your fields and your pastures is because you're getting double the effect. You're getting the hello. You're getting the uh, <laughs> this is Tilly. You're getting the uh, the manure and the urine, whereas the other way you're only getting the urine. Now, on the ground, growing here is basically nothing. It's only been just cleared. And it did have, um, it was tag altars and ash and elm. And that's why we've left some for hopefully shade cover. Because they've proven that by having more shade, that you can increase your pasture output because of the, the temperature window that is more ideal for, for growth. more ideal for growth. <laughs> hey, Em. So this is Emma. She's due to calf. What? She's due to calf um, March 15th. And she has a mini Jersey baby in there. That'll be our first calf born with mini Jersey um, intent. So everyone cross their toes and all their fingers that we end up with a little heifer to start our journey. So the plan will be to come spring, I will come in here, talk about lazy. Didn't even want to get up to take a poop. Plan will be to come in here and seed it again quite heavily. And now 
if we can get it dry, I'll be able to maintain these little shrubbery things with the brush hog. And hopefully goats and sheep. We'll see. So that's kind of our bale grazing um, how-to. We do it. It's uh, kind of fairly straightforward. Obviously there's going to be a matting effect on on this section here. In the spring it'll be hard for growth to come through it and that's kind of a good and bad I guess. It, on one hand you it's kind of a, a necessary evil but what I've noticed with my other pasture up top that I've started to do this bale grazing. See? Taking a big pea, and that'll help grow. Is the other thing I noticed with the other bale grazing up top has been been huge improvements. I'll have those little small bare spots in the Hello. This is Sheila. Hey sweet girl. So we'll have those bare spots in the spring. And by late summer, they're mostly grown back in. Next year after that, they're completely grassed over and they are thick and green. You drive down the road and you can see the difference in color of the grass based on how much nutrients is being put out of that spot. You'll have kind of your pale, kind of palish green. And then you'll have your dark, dark green um, bale spots. And you'll, you'll see it kind of fade. It'll fade out probably 30 feet each from the center of the, yeah, from the center, so a radius. So it makes a big difference. And not only that, I've put it in spots where the where there's hardly any water uh, retention. The thing with clay is it's the worst of both things. It gets really soft when it's wet, turns to slop, and it gets really hard when it's dry. So it, it's no good on either end. Hello. Hey, Minnie Moo. That's Miss Minnie. So I've, I've started this bale grazing on those spots that are um, really dry, that dry out really fast in the summer. And I noticed that, because it's on a slope, I put them at the top, and I've noted that the ones on the top are growing better than further down because they've ran out of moisture because they've lost their moisture retention. So it really is a wonderful technique. It will likely forever be used on my little property. And yeah. If you want to know anything else, I'll be happy to answer your questions. And if you would subscribe and give me a thumbs up, greatly appreciate it. And I guess that's it. Thumbs up, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, send me a bunch of chocolates. Yeah, I think that's it. Anyways, bye for now, guys.